Hi guys, my name is Cash and welcome back to Cashed Out Cars. This is episode four of my Turbo Miata build that has a $1,500 budget, two broke, two boosted. In today's episode, we are installing a AEM Electronics AFR gauge. Now this will help the standalone ECU a lot with the tuning process and will also allow me to monitor my car and make sure I'm not running too lean or too rich. So this is an extremely helpful tool when tuning a standalone ECU and a turbocharged car. So I did have a bit of a technical problem and I actually filmed most of this installation and my SD card got corrupted. So I'm going to take you through what I did so far and then finish up the installation with you on this video. All right, so now let's get into the actual installation of this wide bando two sensor and AFR gauge. So the biggest thing that I could tell you is pay attention to the instruction manual that comes with your AFR sensor um, and your gauge because this is gonna tell you exactly what you need to do and different gauges are gonna use different methods of installation. So mine is this AEM Performance Electronics X Series gauge with the wide bando two sensor. And like I said, I mostly have this installed and I'm just going to take you through all the wiring on this Miata. While you're installing one of these, pay attention to which wires do what. The important thing is that you hook your red wire up to switched power and your black wire up to ground. You should really use the same ground that the ECU is grounded to. And for this car, I'm using the white 0 to 5 volt analog output, which is the wideband O2 signal. Also, you do need to hook up your new O2 sensor using this connector. That one's very simple. Basically, you plug in your O2 sensor, plug in this harness to the gauge, and then you're in good shape. So now I'm going to take you through on the car what I did to wire everything in and then finish up this installation with you guys. All right, so like I was showing you in the manual, the first wire that you need to wire in is your switch 12 volt power. On a Miata, this blue wire down here is switch 12 volt power and mine actually was already teed off, so I went ahead and used that. Also, I went ahead and put an inline fuse in. AEM recommends a five amp fuse, but I only had a three, so I put that in. This will be extra safe compared to a five amp, but it also might blow more. So um, I'm gonna try that and hope that that works out pretty well. Next thing you have to wire in is your ground. Um, that's the black wire that comes off of the main harness for the gauge. And I ran that up into the engine bay here to this ground on the engine block. And I ran everything through this hole in the firewall that already existed there. So I thought this was a pretty good spot. Ideally, you do want to ground this to the same spot that the ECU is grounded to get the best signal. Once you have that stuff all hooked up, you could go ahead and reconnect your battery and try to turn on the gauge and see if you get anything on the screen. If you do, you know you've hooked up your power correctly and then you could re-disconnect your battery and continue the rest of the installation. Once you have your power and ground hooked up to the gauge, you can move on to installing your new O2 sensor. Now this will depend on where in your exhaust your O2 bung is and if you're putting a new bung in something like a custom downpipe. With mine, I put my new wideband O2 sensor in the bung that's in that uh, racing beat header down there. And this was a fairly easy installation. Th this one just screwed right out and the new one went right in. Do note that since this is in the exhaust, they heat up a lot and uh, could be pretty stuck and hard to get out. So pull this out, put your new wideband O2 sensor in, and then we can move on to the next step. And that next step is figuring out which wire was the original O2 sensor wire that ran to the ECU. And this part's a little bit scary, but what you need to do is cut that wire and solder in the five volt output from your wideband gauge. Now, like I said, this five volt output is the wideband output of this gauge. And that's what you wanna run to your aftermarket ECU if it's capable of using an aftermarket wideband sensor. Now, if it's not, you're not gonna wanna use this specific wideband because this does not have a narrow band output, so you could only have a wide band output. I went ahead and soldered that in, 
And then I also connected this harness, which is the wideband O2 sensor harness that goes straight into the back of the gauge. And that basically gets us to where we were at with this installation when I lost all my stuff off of my SD card. So now we can move forward. This thing is basically installed now, and now we need to just clean up the wires, get the interior back together, and then test that it works. Ideally, I am gonna test that it works before I put everything back together in case I need to change anything else. The first thing I'm doing here to clean up the wires is sealing off the ends of the extra wires that come out of the gauge that I'm not using right now. To do that, I'm just putting a little bit of heat shrink on them and that'll help prevent them from shorting out on each other and causing any problems. Now I've got those wires tucked nicely out of the way and I'm gonna reinstall this panel. Now that's nicely cleaned up down there. I have the rest of this wiring nicely coiled up behind where the radio sits. I'm gonna plug the radio back in, get this tombstone back into place and run this out where the vent goes. And then I'll be able to plug in the gauge, get this thing all back together and then make sure that the sensor is actually coming up in the Tuner Studio software. All right, so now the gauge is all installed here. Um, as you can see, it comes right on. It has a heater function because it needs to heat up that sensor before it will accurately read. So right now it's heating. It has a cool progress bar that goes around the outside. And yeah, this thing is installed. The very last thing I need to do is try to hook this up in Tuner Studio, make sure that the ECU understands that it has a new O2 sensor, and then this installation will be complete. For different cars with different ECU setups, and different programs that you're using to run them. The following will be different. So basically follow this for a wiring guide if you have this exact sensor. If you have a wide band that's not this one, definitely use your instruction manual and this guide to figure out what you need to do. And yeah, that's gonna wrap up the installation of this gauge and wide band O2 sensor. This wide band O2 sensor ran me about $160 for the gauge and the sensor itself. The total amount of money that I've spent so far on this Turbo Meow a project is roughly $545. Now the total budget for this is $1,500 and once we get the electronics all sorted out we'll be able to move on to the actual mechanical parts of the turbo setup which for me is going to be easier to understand than a lot of this electronic stuff but all of it's a great learning experience for myself and I hope it is for you too. So if you're using a speedy EFI like I am or a mega squirt or a different ECU that uses Tuner Studio, you could go ahead up to tools, calibrate AFR sensor, and then select the sensor that you're using. Mine is a AEM 30-0300. I believe that this is gonna be the closest option, so I'm gonna try that, write it to controller, and see if the AFR that comes up on Tuner Studio matches what I'm getting read on the actual gauge. And now that that's set up, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this car started. I will say that after the very successful first start, I wasn't able to get the car started again, and I was hoping that this wideband O2 sensor would help solve that problem. So right now, I'm gonna try that and find out. I don't have super high hopes. I think I'm gonna have to mess with the startup tune just a little bit to get it to run. But anyway, this wideband is successfully installed. If it doesn't start up right now, um, it's not necessarily because that wideband is installed wrong. I'm gonna have to mess with my tune because I'm still pretty new to this. But anyway, let's give it a shot. All right guys, so it is the next day now. I figured out the problem with this thing and I'm just gonna show you that the starts and that the gauge does in fact work. Um, what I had to do was revert my ECU to some older firmware with an older tune. And that's actually what I should have done in my Speedy EFI installation video. So if you order from Speedy EFI, keep the firmware that they send on the ECU and keep the tune that they send and it's guaranteed to work. If you update it, it might not. But anyway, now let's start this thing and I'll show you that the AFR gauge does work. As you can see, the AFR gauge is working. This thing right now is reading lambda, not direct AFR, which is why you're seeing a decimal number like that, but it is working. 
that's gonna wrap up this video. Like I said, if you wanna get this AFR gauge, I have it linked down below. This is a great general guide for pretty much any AFR gauges and wideband O2 sensors that should help you out. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And if you wanna see the next episode of Too Broke, Too Boosted right now, you could go ahead over to my Patreon and check it out there. Hope you have a great day and take care.